Good evening, everyone. Your first forecast is brought to you by Stored at Home. Rent to own portable buildings in Gina. We did have showers that moved through, and sometimes it was a little bit on the heavy side, and it did cause low visibilities. We are going to see our chances of rain start to uh, really taper off, especially for in the early morning hours as the cold front that has been draped over our area continues to move away. But there are a few showers that will remain in the western half of the state. Tomorrow, it's going to be much cooler and it won't be quite as humid. Temperatures starting off around 56 degrees, mostly cloudy conditions, and we should see a little bit of sunshine during the day. Our high tomorrow, much like today, only around 65 degrees, and we're going to see a warming trend, though, toward the end of the week. We'll have details on that coming up in just a little bit. Welcome to ABC 31 News Tonight, I'm Scott Beadle. This just in, Alexandria police have found the body of a woman after searching for three days. Police believe she jumped from the Jackson Street Bridge early Sunday. Her identity is not being released. Mike Jenkins has announced the reopening of a post office downtown. The post office will be located inside the commercial building next to the Chamber of Commerce. You know, just as uh, downtown was getting st started again and some real positive things were happening, both the uh, hotels are open and the community colleges will be opening. They're breaking ground right now and uh, hopefully it'll be open by next fall. And uh, we just needed that. We needed it downtown and so many people, uh, you know, counted on that uh, for their local services and it, it couldn't have moved out at a worse time. And so thank God, you know, we've uh, we've had a uh, turnaround in their thinking and they're moving it all back downtown where it needs to be, especially with the momentum that's going on in downtown. Now Jenkins tells us that construction will begin in November and it shouldn't be long before the downtown post office is back up and running. A pedestrian is being killed in a collision in St. Landry Parish on Highway 742. State troopers say 76-year-old Russell Zachary of Opelousas was out near Ami Road in his hometown. He reportedly fell into the lane of an oncoming SUV. That accident happened early Monday morning. Earlier today, the Food Bank of Central Louisiana's Good Food Project received a gift that will keep on giving. A lot of the community organizations work with uh, need a lot of resources to carry out their mission, right? And transportation is certainly one of those, right? So you can donate time, you can donate money, or you can donate resources that allow them to accomplish their mission. So we felt the donation of a van would allow them to extend their reach into the community and just be a great resource for them to get the job done. You know, one of the things that's important to us in the, in the Medicaid business uh, is supporting the communities. And the food banks play a tremendous role uh, to support our mission and, and we want to support their mission as this is just one way to support them and really um, support the food bank and make sure you know folks in the state of Louisiana have access to to, uh, to food and, and nutrition to live the outcomes that we want them to live. We're thrilled. I mean, it's beautiful. I mean, if you haven't seen it, you've got to see the fruits and vegetables on it. It's, it's perfect for the Good Food Project because the Good Food Project is all about teaching people how to grow their own food and about making healthy choices. And it, it, we had requested some type of vehicle to help pull our trailer that's full of soil and the vehicle that we have now isn't currently able to do that at capacity. So we ended up having to make a lot of extra Extra trips and so when we requested this we had no idea what form it was going to take and then now we've got this beautiful van out here that can help our team do their job more efficiently and so you know the Good Food Project supports 75 gardens beyond our demonstration garden here at the food bank. This vehicle will be used to support the garden programs including installation of gardens, nutrition education, and community garden supports. Louisiana is responding to the crisis caused by Hurricane Michael in the Florida Panhandle. Emergency personnel from Homeland Security and from Agriculture and Forestry are going to the area. The Louisiana National Guard has also sent a helicopter support mission. Today, Alexandria area credit union professionals stopped by Horseshoe Drive Elementary. Louisiana credit union professionals across the state are taking this week to educate students on spending, saving, and sharing money. 
We do this, the young professionals across central Louisiana are doing this as a way to pay back to our community. This week is Credit Union Week. And so we are so excited to be able to come into the local schools across the state and to do reading initiatives that point to education with finances. Okay, number one, I, the first takeaway I want them to have is for them to experience someone else reading them to them. That is so important for our students to hear readers at, at any grade level or any age level read to our students. It helps build their fluency. It helps build their experience with books. So that's my first takeaway. I'm so thrilled to have someone else come into our school and read with our children. The second thing I'd like for them to take away is again the lesson about money of how it's here today but it can be gone tomorrow and we have to choose how to to spend it wisely. The credit union workers came bearing gifts as well. Each student is taking home a Berenstein Bears book. The credit union group plans to visit 15 schools by the end of the week. An Alexandria police officer is arrested for simple assault for an off-duty incident. He's 37-year-old Corporal Ronnie Stevens Jr. Police say there were two incidents over the weekend where he created a disturbance by yelling, cursing, and making verbal threats. Following APD protocol, he is placed on administrative leave and will face a disciplinary investigation. Alexandria police say they have caught a suspected armed robber in the Garden District. They believe 26-year-old Aljamar Henderson of Alexandria held up a resident and took his wallet. Police say the crime happened on Albert. They found the suspect a few hours later on Culver apparently lying on a handgun. He is charged with armed robbery and illegal possession. Grand deputies say they've arrested two for breaking into storage buildings. They are 36-year-old Nancy Koch and 29-year-old Edwin Bordelon, both of Pollock. Deputies say the two of them apparently had a baby with them during the burglaries. Alexandria Police's new property crime unit has made an arrest. They apprehended 36-year-old Kendrick Cheney on Elliott Street. They say he is responsible for numerous burglaries. The property crimes unit officers say they have seen recent spikes in vehicle and residential break-ins in the Garden District area of Elliott and Maury and in Wilshire Park off Jackson Street. And Rapids deputies have made a pair of drug arrests in the Woolworth area. Woodworth area, excuse me. They are 51-year-old Robbie Lynn Mullins and 34-year-old Joni Mullins. Rapids deputies say community complaints led them to the duo at their camper on North Lake Drive. Drug agents say they found what they believe to be meth. LSUA's Sarah Black stopped by earlier this week to give us a preview of the university's upcoming fall events. Sweet potato farmers were finally able to get in their fields and harvest what is shaping up to be a very good crop for most growers. Rain and a shortage of harvest crews delayed producers but they are now full into their harvest and many are encouraged by first rate yields. Yields, we're hearing some uh, extra good yields. and then some. All right, we'll come back to that story in just a moment. But uh, if you do want to find out more about those events, you can go to the LSUA website. That is at lsua.com slash events. Well, today we caught up with Dr. Stanton McNeely of the Louisiana Association of Independent Colleges and Universities. He shared his thoughts on recent reports about Louisiana higher education schools. All right, we'll come back to that story for you a little bit later, hopefully. Clico says it is interested in partnering with the city of Lafayette to serve their utility customers. They will be making a proposal to work along with the mayor and city council which have a city parish government. Louisiana sweet potato farmers have taken to their fields and are approaching the midpoint of their harvest. Yields have been good, but acreage is down. LSU Ag Center correspondent Craig Gotro has this report from Morehouse Parish. Sweet potato farmers were finally able to get in their fields and harvest what is shaping up to be a very good crop for most growers. Rain and a shortage of harvest crews delayed producers but they are now full into their harvest and many are encouraged by first rate yields. Yields, we hearing some uh, extra good yields and then some others saying where they're off slightly from where they were last year, but it's still decent yields. In Louisiana, sweet potato growers have two choices for their product, the fresh market or a sweet potato processing plant. A lot of growers have, have uh, left the fresh market entirely and went to processing 
and they are comfortable with the economic picture that it paints for them. Vinoy Canard grows strictly for the processing market. He says the fresh market is not as consistent as the processing side and it is more costly to produce a fresh market potato. It makes it so much easier on us. We know what we're going to get for the potatoes. And I really would, wouldn't be farming them right now if it wasn't for that because it's so much harder to, to fresh market them. One area of concern regarding sweet potatoes in Louisiana is the decrease in acreage. The 2018 crop has seen nearly a 20% reduction. Last year we had about 9,200 acres. This year, according to reports, we got about 7,700 acres. And that's attributed some to some growers cutting some acreage back and some retirements. With the yield of this year's crop in Louisiana, consumers should have no problem finding fresh sweet potatoes. With the LSU Ag Center, this is Craig Gotro reporting. Last year, Louisiana produced nearly 4 million bushels of sweet potatoes with a total production value of nearly $93 million. All right, LSU's Sarah Black stopped by earlier this week to give us a little preview of some of the university's upcoming fall events. We do. October is traditionally one of our bigger months and uh, busiest months, so of course we do have a lot of events going on. First and foremost, we have our annual event, which is our Trick or Treat Street. Uh, this takes place towards the end of October every month or every year, um, right before Halloween, obviously. So this year it will be Thursday, October the 25th from 5 to 7, uh, right there at LSU Way. So of course you can bring out the kids, the whole family in their costume. They can trick or treat amongst uh, faculty, staff student organizations, load up on plenty of candy and kind of try out that uh, costume in a safe, fun environment um, a couple of days before Halloween. Then a Halloween open mic night so you can uh, bring your spookiest story. Your to find out more about these events, you can visit lsua.com slash events. Well, today we caught up with Dr. Stanton McNeely of the Louisiana Association of Independent Colleges and Universities. He shared his thoughts on recent reports about Louisiana higher education schools. What we want to do is foster collaborations. We have some great collaborations, some of which I'm speaking about today. Um, there is the Louisiana University's Marine Consortium, which includes private universities and public universities. There's a Council for Development of French in Louisiana. There's the Louisiana University Library System. There is the uh, Louisiana CAT System with health care between LSU Health, Tulane University, and Xavier University. And all these initiatives serve as great examples, including the Historically Black College University Advisory Council that shows examples of public and private universities working together to move us up. McNeely believes if private and non-private institutions work together, those rankings will improve. Kim's with us now and uh, yeah, talk about that fall weather, huh? Yeah, it definitely came. Today our temperatures dropped down into the 60s, 61 degrees, our afternoon high. Considering yesterday we were in the 80s, it definitely felt very cool out there and we picked up nearly an inch of rain so far. We are going to see more chances of rain for tomorrow, but those temperatures will start to warm up. We'll take a look at your forecast coming up. <laughs> 